Hi, I'm Chuck Whitlock, and welcome to the first ever virtual art show at the Art in the Arboretum. Because of the pandemic, we canceled the three-day in-person art sale in November. We know how important it is to our artists and their customers to be able to participate in the annual art show. So this year, the beautiful artwork from our artists will be on display virtually. And instead of a three-day sale, our virtual show runs from November 6th to December 17th. Because many of us don't want to shop in stores during the pandemic, this is the perfect solution. You'll be able to view the art online and order what you want at your leisure. The artist will make the arrangements to get your purchases to you. You'll find a large variety of beautiful artwork from over 70 artists on our website, www.artinthearboretum.com between November 6th and December 17th. The 2D artists featured have decades of experience in mediums including oil, watercolors, acrylics, alcohol ink, pen and ink, charcoal, and photography. You'll also see fabrics, banners, and so much more intriguing artwork. Participating 3D artists will showcase their imaginative artwork for sale in ceramic sculpture, glass, metal, wood, stone, textiles, and jewelry. With the holidays right around the corner, what better gift than an original piece of art that will be enjoyed for years to come? In addition to gifts for those on your list, perhaps it's simply time to treat yourself with a special addition to your own home. You can use your credit card and the artist will make sure that your purchase is either delivered or shipped to you or the person you'd like to receive it. An in-person pickup of the artwork is also an option. Here's a sample of some of the artist's work that you will find online in our virtual show. Hi, I'm Kathy Poulos. I'm a local artist here in Wilmington, North Carolina, and I've been participating in the Art in the Arboretum show for years. So I'm, I have a large canvas here, 20 by 30. That's acrylic, and this is an abstract painting, which is sort of new to me. And it's been really an exciting and freeing experience for me. A second piece I did was this oil painting and it's of a little girl on the beach uh, playing with the wet dripping sand. Hi, I'm Christine Sesta and I enjoy nostalgia and, and nature. So this particular piece um, being a, a farmhouse, it just uh, it says nostalgia to me with the tire swing and it brings a lot of memories to people that see it. And this one here is uh, called Through the Leaves and it's um, oil and coal wax. It was inspired by walking through the forest and seeing a surprising creek with the vibrant colors. Hi, I'm Clancy Johnson. Delighted to be here again at the Arch and the Arboretum this year. And uh, we do Shaped by the Sea. You know, Susan and I moved down here, I think like a lot of people go, we love the ocean. So we go to the beach, we're looking not only at the waves and the wonderful shells, but we're looking for things that have a history, things that have a story. You know, the life cycle of the ocean appeals to us. You know, out of the ashes, new things emerge. You know what happens. And that's sort of what Shape by the Sea is about. So we try to find things, old shells, broken shells particularly, bones, fragments of metal, sea glass. And what we do is fashion those into new creations to say that uh, life moves on. I'm Ginger Wainick and I'm the uh, artist behind Bead Ideas. Uh, I make uh, garden art and jewelry and some small sculptures. I got started doing this when, after I retired, I was looking for something to do <laughs> and saw some African paper beads in the shop and became fascinated with the whole process and started making my own. Now I work in paper beads, wire, what I call wire work. Uh, the two things I like most about jewelry are things that make me say, oh, that's beautiful or things that make me chuckle. <laughs> but I love doing all of it. Deb Chiapizzi's art is created by using gourds. Before they can be used as her canvas, they must be picked from the vine where they grow and dry out completely. Once dried, the gourd must be scrubbed to remove the dirt and mold to cover it. The tops and bottoms must be cut off and all seed and membranes removed. 
The inside is then sanded to make it smooth. Finally, her canvas is ready. Deb creates a design and applies it with copy paper. Then using a pyrography tool, she burns the design into the gourd. Acrylic paints and dyes are used to add color to her work. Sometimes a Dremel tool is used to create a filigree design. Each piece is a one-of-a-kind piece of art. Most of her gourds feature a nature scene. My name is Mary Smith and I'm an oil painter. My floral paintings are done mostly from gardens in my own yard and the figurative work comes from either plein air painting or photographs I've taken and reference work. Hi, my name is Jack Manlock. I'm an amateur photographer. And about 10 or 12 years ago, I switched to digital, which opened up a whole new world to me. I was able to capture things in flight, such as this bird, or an action, which I could not have done with film. I have kind of focused on the shorebirds because I think they represent to us a very eloquent creature and demonstrate the sensitivity of our coastal environment. Um, over here you see a picture of the swans. Again, I think they represent the sensitivity of the environment, the coastal environment, and the need for us to have diligent stewardship. I'm Tim Schwartz with Love of the Grain Workshop. Um, out of my garage, making furniture, custom furniture and cutting boards, um, and then different household items uh, and, and decor, things like that. It started out basically as kind of re refinishing and remodeling furniture, and then somebody asked me to make something custom, and it kind of grew from there. Um, and I, just like my name of the business, Love of the Grain, I love uh, all different kinds of wood and the unique characteristics you see throughout the wood and working with it. Uh, to make something and enhance it uh, into something that's usable. My name is Nicole Ragaman and I am an artist here in the Wilmington area. I largely work in oil paints and that's what both of these paintings here that you can see are today. Uh, this one here is inspired by hydrangeas, which are my absolute favorite flower. You'll also notice on my website and my other work that I have here at the Arboretum, um, I have lots of saturated color and also coastally inspired art. Again, all in oil paints. Sarah Sheffield's Sound Fun is a 24 by 24 oil on panel. She paints both in the studio and outdoors from real life. Her years painting outdoors help her to capture the colors and light of the outdoors in her studio work. This painting was inspired from a summer day spent on a dock, watching boaters at Wrightsville Beach on the sound side. The motorboats, sailboats, paddle boats, kayakers and swimmers were all sharing the water. She wanted the painting to show the warmth, joy and exuberance of a day on the water. Sarah's painting, Lucky Lures, is a 16 by 16 inch oil on panel. She lives with a fisherman who inherited beautiful handmade vintage lures. They reminded her of a fisher's version of a jewelry box. She enjoys painting vintage items and hopes that they arouse happy memories in her viewers. Welcome back. While the majority of the proceeds go to the artist, your purchase will also support the Arboretum's projects and programs to help keep these gardens one of the most beautiful gems in New Hanover County. By supporting our local artists, you'll be giving not only to the artists, but also the Wilmington Art Association and the Arboretum. So get comfortable and take your time enjoying and shopping the wonderful artwork featured in the Art in the Arboretum 2020 virtual show and sale at www.artinthearboretum.com. That's www.artinthearboretum.com.